Ten times Naruto's hot-headedness made things worse. Naruto's hot-headedness persisted through the series up until his arrival at the war. When it did, things only ever got worse. On the surface, Naruto's greatest weakness seems to be that he's rather dumb, much like his fellow shonen protagonists Goku and Luffy. While he has his moments, particularly in part 1. His true weakness is how hot-headed he is. It's a trait that he inherited from his mother, often leading to him shifting into some form of a tailed beast. The triggers varied depending on if it was part 1 or Shippuden. But the negative trait persisted through the series up until his arrival at the war. When it did, things only ever got worse. 10. Kakashi embarrassed him during the bell test. During the bell test, Naruto's biggest flaw reared its head immediately. He rushed towards Kakashi and tried to take the bells by force. It's one thing to be confident in your abilities and another to think you could handle someone two ranks above you, something Naruto learned the hard way when Kakashi hung him upside down a tree and eventually tied him to one. It showed how far both Naruto and Team 7 had to go before they were a proper unit. 9. He helped pique Orochimaru's interest in Sasuke further. While in the forest of death for the Chunin exams, Orochimaru reared his snakehead, making his presence known for the first time. His presence frightened both Sakura and Sasuke, something Naruto wouldn't stand for. He called out Sasuke's cowardice and tried to engage the San Nin, only to get his Nine Tails chakra suppressed in their fight, rendering him unconscious. However, it spurred Sasuke to fight, giving Orochimaru a first-hand look at the Uchiha's talents. 8. He embarrassed himself in front of Tsunade. When Naruto first came into contact with Tsunade, their meeting was less than cordial. She had no desire to become Hokage, going so far as to disrespect anyone who ever held the title. That rightfully got under Naruto's skin as he challenged her to a fight. It ended up not being much of one as he attacked with an incomplete Rasengan and was thoroughly outclassed. It wasn't Naruto's best moment, even if his determination did resonate with Tsunade. 7. His promise to bring Sasuke back to Konoha by force backfires. It's never a good idea to say you're going to take someone somewhere against their will, even if you have the best intentions. That's the case when Naruto was determined to stop Sasuke from leaving the village by any means necessary. A fight between the two may have been inevitable, but Naruto's words didn't help matters. By the end of their battle, Sasuke was the one left standing, only furthering his desire to learn from Orochimaru after the cursed seal provided his victory. 6. The Nine Tails mocked Naruto's failures brought out version 2 on Jiraiya. More fault lies with Jiraiya here than it does with Naruto, as he never should have weakened the seal. To begin with, he should have known better than to give the Nine Tails the opening it needed. The beast within Naruto knew all too well what buttons to push, harping on his Jinchuriki's failures to save their friend. As with all things Sasuke, Naruto couldn't handle his emotions and shifted into version 2. The form nearly ended up taking Jiraiya's life in the ensuing battle. 5. Naruto's rage allows Deidara to escape. When Deidara flew off with Gara's body, Naruto made repeated attempts to retrieve his friend, each failure enraging him more and more. Once he succeeds, it only further ramps up his anger at the Akatsuki member, sending him into his second-tailed form as he wailed on Deidara. The problem is that it was merely a clay clone. Giving the real Deidara plenty of time to escape as Naruto battled the clone. It's a prime example of Naruto's anger clouding his judgment. 4. Naruto can't tell friend from foe in version 2 form strike Sakura. The biggest trigger when it comes to Naruto is mentioning how he's failed to protect Sasuke. It seems to instantly cause Naruto to tap into the Ninetales chakra. 
and in this case, he went all the way to version 2 thanks to Orochimaru's barbs. While his power in this form is immense, he loses all control and can't tell friends from foes. It caused him to swat Sakura off the bridge, sending her falling helplessly to the ground, forcing Yamato to save her. 3. His attempt to attack Kakuzu Hiden with a newly formed jutsu nearly caused him to lose his heart. It makes sense that Naruto would be proud of his new ability and that he would be angry over Asuma's death. But deciding to take on Kakuzu by himself was stupid. Even more than that, attacking him head-on with the Raisin Shuriken wasn't much better, even if the attack was going to land had it not fizzled out. Thankfully, Yamato and Kakashi were there to help make up for Naruto's mistake, freeing him from Kakuzu's grasp before his heart could be taken. 2. Pain nearly made him give in to the Nine Tails. During the battle with Pain, Naruto's resolve was taken to the limit as Pain challenged it in ways no one else had. For once, Naruto's anger was turned at himself rather than someone else. He hated that he didn't have the power to give Pain the type of peace he desired, making him question if his goals were worthless. That inner turmoil combined with Hinata's apparent death caused Naruto to nearly give in to the Nine Tails to defeat Pain, giving in to his grief and anger. Thankfully, his father stopped him from making a huge mistake. 1. Naruto trying to defeat Dark Naruto in battle stalls his progress controlling Kurama. While at the Falls of Truth, Naruto was trying to gain the same mastery over Kurama as Killer B had with his tailed beast. Rather than being confronted by the Nine Tails, Naruto was faced with a dark version of himself, one he immediately engaged in combat after it berated him. The battle was a standstill, slowing the progress Naruto was making on the island. Eventually, Naruto figured out he needed to accept that half of him was part of who he was, but his hot-headedness won out at first. <laughs>